Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be repairing this Chinese smartphone, the Xiaomi Mi A1, using parts from AliExpress. I acquired this phone as it stands from a previous tech lot and I'm unaware of its history. It's badly cracked with many dints around the bent frame, it's missing its camera lens, and the phone won't power on. Chinese phones are extremely uncommon here in Australia, so I turned to China as a source for replacement parts. Having had many bad experiences with replacement parts from China in the past, I'm hoping with this being a Xiaomi phone, we'll have better luck. Plugging the phone in, you can see it briefly lines up with the Mi logo before shutting off again. The phone also won't do anything without first being plugged in. Therefore, I'm confident in the case of this phone, the culprit is just a bad battery. So I set out and purchased a quote, premium replacement display, original battery and camera lens from AliExpress, the Chinese equivalent of eBay. And this is what showed up. I never received the camera lens even four months later, but I did get my $2.96 back after filing a dispute. So already we're not off to a good start. It's time to open up this phone by removing the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of this iPhone. Wait, this isn't an iPhone? Why is it using Apple's tamper resistant screws? With the screws out, it's time to remove the SIM card tray before trying to lift up the display panel. I attempted to do this by using a suction cup, however, it was unable to hold onto the shattered glass. I resorted to poking a plastic pick into the already snapped frame to get beneath the display. I could then work it around the perimeter to separate the back panel. Given how similar this phone looks to the iPhone 7 Plus, I was expecting the internals to be housed in the back and not attached to the display as they are here. With our first look inside the phone, you can see it's quite dirty, but the battery doesn't seem to have expanded or been physically damaged. Firstly, I'm going to disconnect the battery and test fit the replacement. Despite being advertised as original, its label differs. Regardless, we can now try and power on the phone. This phone is running Android 1, which in the case of this phone is just Android 9. Now that we know that the power issue was related to the battery, we can continue on with our repair by replacing the front display panel. To do that, I'll need to remove all of the components attached to the display's midframe. I'll start with the speaker and charging port down at the lower portion of the phone. Several Phillips head screws and flex cables will need to be disconnected before it can be unadhered and removed from the phone. Next to come out is that battery. I'll need to remove the battery removal strips which are similar to those found in the iPhone. Given the large tabs on the top of these strips, they were easy to grip and remove. Afterwards, that Samsung made battery came right out. Next, I'll need to unadhere the interconnect cable and disconnect all of the flex cables going to the motherboard. After detaching the LCD cable, I can unplug the power and volume button flex cable and then the cameras. I can proceed to remove the motherboard by unfastening the Phillips screws securing it in place. With the motherboard out of the way, it's time to remove the earpiece speaker and its mesh as well as the two microphone grommets at both the top and bottom of the frame. After removing the volume and power button flex cable which is adhered into place, the last thing that needs to be done is to remove these little metal clips from the side of the frame. They're melted in place with plastic that surrounds them and need to be broken loose in order to remove them. We'll need to keep these safe as we'll reattach them in just a minute. Cracking out our new display panel, it's time to reinstall all of the components we just removed, starting with the earpiece mesh and the rubber grommets for the microphones. After those are installed, we can reattach all of those metal clips which attach to the side of the phone. To install them, I simply melted the plastic tabs which they sit on with a soldering iron in order to keep them in place, just how they were originally. In our new AliExpress screen, I noticed a loose cable which was floating around inside. This was supposed to be adhered down, so I attached it. Speaking of adhesive, I applied some fresh stuff to the back of the volume button flex cable and attached it to the frame.
After positioning the earpiece, I could reinstall the motherboard. Reattaching the seven Phillips head screws. Whilst we saw tamper resistant screws on the outside, all of the internal screws only require a Phillips bit. Down at the bottom, I'll reattach the charging port and the speaker back into the phone. Routing the antenna wire back up to the motherboard, we can then attach the interconnect cable going between the charging port and motherboard, as well as any remaining flex cables. Both the new LCD and interconnect cable lack adhesive, resulting in them loosely sitting inside. I will apply a small amount to keep them in place and out of the way of the battery. It's finally time to get the battery installed. I will remove the protective film over the adhesive, plug in the battery and press it firmly down into place, ensuring it doesn't come out. Afterwards, you can see the adhesive has done absolutely nothing. In fact, it hasn't held the battery in at all. So I'll need to take the battery back out again, remove this completely useless adhesive and apply some of my own. For this, I'll actually be using iPhone adhesive and applying it in the middle section of the battery in order to avoid adhering the battery to any of the flex cables going underneath it. Pressing it into place this time, it's now secured down. We can unbend the metal frame and repair any of the damage to it before cleaning it off with some alcohol and a toothbrush. This phone was quite grimy, so it needed a good clean. Whilst I could have replaced the back housing, I didn't want to spend any more money on this phone. With it all good to go, it can simply be clipped back into place and the two pentalobe screws can be reinstalled at the bottom. From here, the last thing left to do is to remove the plastic protective film and install a tempered glass screen protector. And we're done. So this is it, a phone repaired using only AliExpress parts. How did we go? Well, prepare to be disappointed. That new premium display panel looks worse than a flip phone screen from 2005. Front on, the display looks dim and washed out. But view that display from any kind of an angle and the screen colors shift and the display fades out. The navigation buttons are unevenly lit and overall this display is significantly worse than the original one. One strange thing is when the screen is turning off, the colors look perfect for a fraction of a second. Slowing that down, you can see what I mean. In my opinion, I would avoid buying any phone parts from online marketplaces. You're best to stick with legitimate websites and not random untrusting sellers. I love saving electronics from landfill to reduce e-waste, but the majority of replacement parts from places like China turn up like this. I would consider this screen to be manufactured e-waste as the product is not fit for purpose, it's low quality and isn't something a consumer would want. Therefore, it would be thrown away for a better replacement display. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.